okay so let's get started so in this video we are going to uh, print a pattern which is of this kind which is of this kind and uh, we're gonna use nested uh, for loop to understand this okay so for, forgive me with the drawings but yes i wanted to explain this with the uh, notepad so that a uh, drawing pad so that i'm able to express myself more better so here i have a loop which is starting from i i in range may, normally it starts from zero so it goes till the number minus one so technically it will go from what it will go from zero till three so if i take the possibility of i the iteration of i let me increase the size 20 i think yeah that will be helpful so i will be running from zero then it will run from one then two and then three that means three iteration inside this I have S, which is uh, uh, a constant which gets declared after every iteration. So that is one. So after in every initial of the S, it will remain one. Again, it will remain one. In this iteration also, it will remain one. In this iteration also, it will remain one. Okay. So now coming back to next to that is J, which is the internal iteration, the loop which is inside the loop and which will depend on the i of the above loop so that means if this s this i is on the fourth number this will run for the four times right if it is in the five it will run for the five times so j will technically run in the initial for when i is zero it will run for the zero times but here it will run for uh, one times okay one times and then here it will run for two times and here it will run for three times okay so times means now we have a nested inside this so we'll go for internal printing so now if i go here in j, in this j i will see that this s s which is inside the scope of the this s will be s plus s plus i so s is initially zero so it will not run zero so nothing will happen this will give a blank printing right and it will come out of it and it will give the blank but in the one time in the, in the next iteration when i is equals to one it will just take s equals to s that is one plus one which will which will eventually print which will eventually print one one so initially s was single one so one was printed and now in the second printing one one was printed but in the next iteration of j when when uh, i is two for example i is two s will become again one and then j will run from uh, 0 till 1 that is 2 times so 0 and 1 j's value will be 0 and 1 so that doesn't matter and then inside this in the 2 iteration it will first it will take s equals to 1 plus 1 and then which is equals to 1 1 and then again it will run for another iteration which will be s equals to 1 1 plus 1 which will make this s equals to uh, what uh, one 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 sorry p one right and it will whenever it will come to the next print statement it will become it will become s equals to one 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 triple one sorry this the s which has been printed now let's if I just increase this and if we come to the third iteration I think you will understand it better. At the last iteration and now I'll, I'll start from top this is at this point i is what i is three right now i will give this j indication that you will have to run three times zero one and two right so if i write it will run for uh, three times and the iteration of j will be j will be zero one and two two so i will just increase this box size so that it is on the same line so that means it will run for zero one and two and s was initially one so first iteration s will be single quote one e plus plus the this time one so that is this which is just equal to last uh, in the second iteration what you saw then it will go to the next iteration because it has to run for zero one and two the zero is done now for the one first iteration it will go and say one 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 that was there earlier because s is not getting reset and then again it will uh, do 
plus single quote one, which will make it as one, one, one. Now, because it is going to run for the second time, so it will take S, which is equals to the older value of S, triple one, plus new concatenation of one, which will make it as one, 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 one. So again, I will have to increase this box size and it will look, look something like this. And after this, because it cannot go beyond three iterations, so it will get out of this for loop and it will print the value of S. So S will be printed as one, 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 one. So uh, it is having a pyramid like printing because after S it will a slash in. So one, 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 one. That is similar to this. Now guys, takeaways. Understanding the internal nesting is really important. What is the role of range? What is the scope of J? That is that is something that we should understand because it will this internal loop will iterate till this range is being satisfied. And this range is depending on this range is depending on this value of I and which is internally depending on this range of I. So this external loop is kind of playing with this internal values and this print scope is very important. I'm not printing inside the scope of internal nest. Otherwise, this could have been this could have created different kind of pattern printing output. But here I am putting this print in the scope of external for because after every completion of internal loop, I want to print something which is going to help me uh, print this. So why am I explaining this? Because it's not that this is something that you're going to do every time. Pattern will change. Requirement will change. So understanding this initialization, this concept is really important and is more important than uh, this exact program loop. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, it was clear enough. I've tried debugging this. If you want to uh, try this out, try a different program, I can give you another program here where you can simply uh, try uh, uh, playing with this 333444445555. Okay, so this can be your assignment. Just take uh, a note, take a pen and paper just like this and try doing similar kind of debugging so that you are able to create similar kind of program. Hint for you is now, now these values are not constant. These values are the values of I. So this I is something which needs to be replaced with this S value here. That's a hint. Or maybe you have a better way to do this out, right? So we'll use nesting for loop. That remains the condition of this program. And if you are able to do it, or if not, then just uh, print your output in the uh, comment box and let me know if you have any problem. So it is really similar to this and uh, uh, you may uh, let me know if you have any problem. I'll, I'll try to, you know, give you the solution around it. But yes, I hope I was able to explain the concept that is more important than the exact answer. And also uh, it was clear enough to make you understand the nesting more clearly. Okay, so I have created a separate video for four. There are there are series that I'm going I'm, I'm planning to create. So in the description, you will find all the video links. Just go ahead and understand the concept of four if you have not understood it yet. And try uh, coming back to this video again after that, or maybe try this solution after that. Then I think you will be able to make more sense out of it. What is range is being explained. And it is, it is here also, if I tell you, it's a keyword. Right. So it's a keyword which is helping me from zero till the number. So that's a trick that I'm using to go to drill to a pattern to a number that I want to go. OK, I think you like the video. Thank you so much for your uh, uh, patience. And yes, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe it so that uh, it, it, we can uh, you know, keep on producing similar videos. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye.